<laughs> I think that war and conflict, violent conflict, is a collapse of imagination. Is when we are not capable of imagining something beyond the polarized models that we're given to look at a situation. And imagination is the place where we create the world that we don't have, is where we imagine another world. It was Albert Einstein who said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And I don't know if you remember the Greeks, they divided two, at least two big major ways of knowing one was logos, logic, statistics, information, uh, theories, ideologies, etc. And the other one was mythos, the ongoing story, the story that is constantly creating and recreating ourselves. So my work is somewhere in between that. I, I grew up in Medellin um, as it became the most violent city of the world. Uh, we have in Colombia at least four major groups that protagonized the conflict and the chaos under which I, I grew up. Uh, we had the military at the service of the powerful, the ruling class. We had the guerrilla, the oldest guerrilla group in the world, the FARC and many other groups that I grew up with. And we had the paramilitary death squads, which are mostly people serving also the government and the rich and the wealthy and the landlords. And then we have the mafia. And each one of our famous drug traffickers had enough money to have their own army. And they launched a war against the government in which many people were killed. And it didn't matter what your ideological framework was, it was just terror. So the government uh, was brought to its knees by people like Pablo Escobar and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I grew up with these people. Actually, I went to the same school that Pablo Escobar. <laughs> and 10 years after him. And I met many of these people personally as I became a, a psychologist and I work in a, in a place for drug addicts and alcoholics. So most of our clients were the sons and daughters of the bourgeoisie and the sons and the workers and the wives of the, of the mafia. But uh, I, I did theater also as, as something that in my opinion has saved my life. Theater and imagination, literature as a kid, allow me to imagine or to see that there was another world different to the one I grew up in. I grew up in a very poor family in very violent neighborhoods. Most of the kids that I play soccer with, I play football with, uh, are dead. And many of them ended up in prison. Some of them became guerrilla fighters. Some of them became paramilitaries. Some of them became sicarios, faith killers. And what saved me from any of these options was theater. I was able to become something else than the, the character, the ego, the limited definition of myself that I had. And, and then imagination allowed me to connect to the deep self, what we call the deep self, that in each one of us, that the Greeks called the daimon, uh, and the, the, the Romans call it the, the genius. Each one of us is a genius. I work with kids and kids in prison and kids who their entire life had been told as a failure, uh, as an accident. And these ideas I have seen resonate with all of them, regardless of their condition. So then, because uh, I was a student at the university, uh, the Colombian army uh, took me and tortured me. They didn't have anything on me, just being a, an actor uh, and a student of psychology. But I was very lucky, it was during the week of presidential elections, so I survived. They didn't kill me as they did many of my friends. I stayed in Colombia, but then around 1989, uh, with the civil war that we have, an undeclared civil war, I got tired of burying beautiful people, intellectuals, artists, uh, etc. I didn't matter what political orientation they had. And I ended up in the United States, the last place in the world I wanted to go. The empire, the wolves. Uh, the imperialist uh, country. And it took me very few days to realize that most Americans had no idea what American foreign policy was about. Most of them had no idea. So then it's somehow fate put me there. Not faith, but fate. The fate that you face in order to find your destiny. And I realized also that from there I was able to do many things about Colombia that in Colombia would probably have led me to, to being killed. Uh, so for many years I worked as a psychotherapist and I did theater and I used theater as a psychotherapist, not only psychodrama, etc. 
And for the last eight years, I, I started traveling around the world, going mostly to war zones. I've been in Palestine lately. I have been working with Syrians in Gaziantep, in the border uh, with uh, Turkey. And now I am returning to Colombia. If for the last four years, the FARC has been in negotiations with the Colombian government. It's uh, an unprecedented uh, negotiating process. I invite you to, to read about it. It's really, in four years, a lot has been accomplished. Um, and so I'm very excited with the possibility of going back to my country and contributing to the peace process. So right now, I am uh, facing things like uh, I'm using theater as a laboratory, as a human laboratory for uh, reconciliation. What does it mean, reconciliation? So I will say that the first reconciliation I had to do had been in myself. It had been, uh, for many years, I hated anyone in a uniform, not just a military personnel or, or a policeman. I, I hated a priest. Uh, I hated doctors and businessmen. So I dehumanize myself, dehumanizing many of these people. But when you have children, you have to realize that this hatred is just a poison that you're drinking yourself, pretending that the other person is the one who's going to get affected. So I have to, through therapy and through rituals and through theater and through creativity, I have to uh, process the meaning of these ordeals, at least for me, in my life. And I think that that's what I have to give other people. So when I work in in areas of conflict, it's not just for my own he for their healing, it's for my own healing. It's not for their transformation, I am transforming with them. And I use uh, a lot of the techniques of Augusto Boal, Theater of the Oppressed, maybe some of you have heard about it, and, and other techniques, uh, playback theater, theater of witness, and the basic thing that I do is create spaces for imagination, create spaces for the body to speak, create spaces for dialogue, and create democratic spaces to figure out what to do. Not what we are against, it's very easy to be against everything. You don't need imagination to do that. Although I protest and I do those kinds of things as well, but is what if we don't like what we had, what do we want? And I really don't have the answers. But through theater and, and the world that reconnects, uh, Joanna Macy was mentioned before, an amazing methodology that she has developed, and other methodologies, uh, we dream of what is the world that we want, and then we go through organizations to see what, what is happening and how each one of us can connect to whatever it is that is in you, that is alive in you. Because all of us came here to do something. We chose to be here. I like those ideas. I can approve it, but <laughs> I like these ideas that come from mythology. That is one of us chose this body, the family, the time, the place, because we felt this is the life that I want to live. So we go through all the ideas in life to awaken to that, which is already in all of us. Again, I can approve that, but I like that idea. And uh, so I tell people, is if, if what you're calling is the, the amapolas, uh, saving the butterflies, wonderful, because I would not spend any time in that. I love them, but it's not my calling. So my invitation to the people I work with is connect to that which awake you, awakes you, which uh, uh, you're passionate about. And the beautiful thing about a world that is collapsing and a culture that is unraveling all over us, uh, everywhere, is that everything has to change. We are in an amazing moment in which every paradigm has to change. And I, th I think that through imagination, through theater, it is a beautiful place to perform that which we are and that which we are not yet. And, and so I, I love this idea of this Congress made out of people and all the other ideas that we have heard about how to bring other ways of coming together and dialoguing, et cetera. It's very hard to dialogue with people in the dark, but, but yes. Uh, so I, I'm very thankful to, to be able to be here with you and, um, and maybe to develop more some of these ideas. I had the opportunity to do a workshop with some of the students and show them a little bit of the process that I follow when I go to a community. And, and work with them on developing plays about the issues that they are interested in. And through forum theater, where we create plays that ask questions but do not resolve them, uh, we invite people to become expect actors, not passive spectators, to look at the mirror of society and see, and the mirror of life, and see what they don't like so they can come and try to change it. And uh, that creates a dialogue of alternatives, not a dialogue of someone has the idea. 
I have problems with these ideas that pretend to explain everything. I think we, we live in a very monotheistic, monolithic, monologic, uh, monologic uh, world. And for me, it's about the polysemia of images, about the polytheism, if you wish, about the many, many possibilities. And the same, uh, and I think that the world is going back in that direction. In uh, we, we have to replace it now with, with, bio, uh, with uh, uh, permaculture and, and all these beautiful paradigms, e examples of new paradigms that are happening in the world where people are really trying to self-govern and to self-support uh, uh, themselves. In Colombia, we had the peace communities, and they are all working on how to do that, communities that had been attacked by all the different groups. So right now in Colombia, that's the, the work that I'm doing. I'm working with, uh, with people from the different, uh, different groups, and we sit to hear each other's stories. So for me, it, uh, it's difficult to explain how to sit with a military who, who tortured me, with a paramilitary who uh, tortured, kidnapped, tortured, and killed my brother. Uh, last year, I was with someone who told me how he killed 37 people. And he described that the most difficult one was the first one. After he shot him by orders of his boss, he was asked to cut him in pieces, throw half of the body into the river, and bury the other half. And he described in detail how you do that so the bodies don't float. And then uh, he told me that he had changed. And now his work was to unbury body parts. And he described how he was with seven women, mothers, wives, and sisters, of a bone that he was taking out, and because of DNA, he was going to be the relative of one of them, and how they all hug him and thank him for doing that work, not knowing that he was the one who put those bones, the, the, the body there, a few years earlier. So this is the kind of work and the kind of stories that we need to create containers to be able to hold, uh, because I feel that the one of the biggest challenges right now for us, challenges in the world, is healing. And you guys also have a lot of healing to do. <laughs> this is not just about the third world. I mean, your ancestors participated at least in, just to mention one thing, in the transportation of slaves not many years ago. And you uh, benefit from, from those, the privilege of all the wealth that this brought to this country. Uh, so I feel that all of us have something to do, something to participate by becoming aware of the things that we enjoy today and what it means for the rest of the world. Now with the migration of people from Africa and from the Middle East, you are faced with this. These are consequences of our colonial policies, or in this case, your colonial policies. And it's very easy to say, well, those were my ancestors or were people that I don't know who they were. I didn't do that, but you are benefiting from that. So this is not about being feeling guilty because that doesn't help anyone, not you, not anyone in the world. It's about what do I do with this privilege? And I think that when people like you awake, you are able to promote and to give and to create amazing things. All of you have amazing power, and the world is just... Uh, a very wide place to do things with people, to, to work with people, not to do it for them, that's insulting, but to work with people, like we heard some of the examples today. Is that, uh, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't, I don't know how long I'm going to talk, and I don't, well, actually I don't that's have a watch. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, actually oh, that's 15 25. minutes. <laughs> Hector, thank you oh, thank very you. much.